Hello, welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Key Lime Interactive. My name is Kelly Nurses and I'll be your host this afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. We have a big audience today and we're so happy you all are here with us. As you know, the topic of this webinar is the role of facial expressions in user research. This is the second webinar in a three-part series. If you missed the first one where we talked on the role of body language in user research, you can catch up by going to bit.ly forward slash body language webinar. So I'm now happy to introduce our presenter today, Matt Bruce. He's been with Keyline for about nine months now and has over five years of user experience research. Um, along with our CEO, Anya Rodriguez, Matt hosted the last webinar we did on body language. This time he's gonna be taking a deep dive into the seven universal facial expressions to pick up on while observing users. So just before we get the conversation started today, I wanna to quickly cover a couple of guidelines to keep in mind throughout the next 30 minutes. So we want this talk to be interactive for you guys. There's two channels where you can ask questions in real time during the webinar. The first, you can post your question in the chat window, or you can follow this conversation on Twitter and use the hashtag KLI events. We have a lot of time at the end of this discussion for Q&A portion, and we're gonna do our best to get to everyone's questions at that time. For questions we may not get a chance to answer, we are going to email everyone directly with a response following this webinar. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. And Matt, I think this is a great place for you to kick off. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your day uh, to join us for this webinar. I'm very excited to uh, bring this webinar um, to you today. It's the second of a three-part series that we're doing on the body language, uh, role of body language in user research. Um, this uh, second installment is going to be about uh, facial expression. So we're gonna talk about the role of facial expressions in user research. Let me just start by uh, talking a little bit about uh, the agenda, what the next 30 minutes or so is gonna look like. So we're gonna first start with a little bit of an introduction, uh, talk a little bit about Key Lime Interactive and, and who we are as a company. Um, next, I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, frankly, why facial expressions and studying them um, as UX researchers is important. Uh, why does it matter? Uh, third, I'm going to jump right into the bulk content of this webinar, which is the, uh, which are the seven universal uh, facial expressions of emotion. So what we're going to do is we're going to share those seven, and I'll and I'll go through each one. Um, sharing some of the different uh, physical characteristics of each facial expression, and then uh, we'll follow up at the end uh, with a little bit of a Q&A section just to uh, answer uh, any questions that you may have as we go through. So first, let me talk a little bit about us. Who are we? Key Lime Interactive. Well, we, we are a full-service user research firm. Uh, we conduct uh, both qualitative and quantitative research. Um, our three superpowers, if you will, are UX strategy, uh, formative and summative usability testing, uh, and uh, we do benchmarking and uh, different forms of competitive analysis. Now uh, into the next portion, which is why facial expressions matter. This is very important uh, to know. I want to first start off by saying, obviously, while facial expressions can be voluntary in the sense that I can throw a smile on my face at any point, Facial expressions, um, in essence, are the involuntary subconscious um, responses that we make uh, in, in, re in response to like an interaction or some sort of event. Um, so really, uh, facial expressions matter because in a user research context, as you're conducting qualitative research and you're running a session, as a user makes some sort of facial expression, it's usually representative and of their emotion, uh, emotional state at that given point in time, which, um, is, it, it, which is a critical finding because you're able to identify not only how that person is interacting with the design, but how they feel at that exact moment. So now we're gonna jump into the, uh, the seven universal facial expressions of emotion. Uh, over the next seven slides or so, like I said, I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit about the physical characteristics that make up each of these um, uh, different uh, facial expressions. I'm also gonna share some um, instances of times uh, in user research when, uh, when these facial expressions can be, uh, can be, can be seen. Uh, the first uh, facial expression that we're gonna talk about is joy and ha or happiness. Uh, hopefully this is a facial expression that all of you make at some point uh, during this webinar. 
Um, uh, it's, a, it's a very common thing. Obviously, you can see this individual is smiling, um, so they're joyous, they're happy. Uh, some of the physical, char uh, physical characteristics to describe uh, joy or happiness, the muscles around the eyes are tightened, you notice crow's feet, uh, wrinkles, uh, the cheeks are raised, uh, lip corners are raised diagonally. Um, this is obviously an individual that perhaps just finished uh, completing a task successfully. Uh, in a user research context, uh, you, can, uh, you can go ahead and say that obviously this is the goal. Uh, the goal is to get your users to to represent to do uh, facial expressions that would be representative of a pleasant experience, if you will. If your users are smiling, they're probably happy with what they're dealing with, uh, or they're con confident about what they're discussing, which is always a good thing. Uh, the second facial expression that we are going to talk about is uh, surprise. So surprise is a facial expression. Um, obviously, you can see this. There's a picture of this individual. His uh, both of his eyebrows are pulled up and raised. Uh, there's a wrinkling of the forehead. Uh, both eyelids are also raised, and the mouth is hang hanging open. So in a user research context, uh, when someone becomes surprised, it's, it's usually because they've encountered something that perhaps they, they didn't expect to see. Sometimes a user will uh, you know, click a continue button and get to a subsequent page uh, or, or subsequent content that they weren't expecting to see. They can get uh, sort of caught off guard. Um, so, uh, what you want to do as a UX researcher, obviously, if you identify this, is um, it's important to note when a user becomes surprised, obviously, because there's more work that needs to be done uh, to give, to give a, a user more of an inclination as what to expect uh, by making a certain action, like clicking a continue button. The uh, third facial expression that we're going to talk about is uh, contempt. Contempt is an interesting uh, facial expression. When someone is contemptuous, it's usually because they're slightly confused. It's consistent with a decent level of uncertainty. Um, a, a user, you may see a user um, in, a, in a test session trying to interact with something on, on the screen. They could be trying to complete a task that you, uh, that you gave them, or they could be just reading content. Um, and they may be unsure of something or uncertain of, of what's going to happen from a certain action, and you, they may make this uh, a contem a contemptuous facial expression. Uh, the facial expression of contempt is characterized by, uh, you can see a, a slight furrowing of the eyebrows uh, while the eyes relatively remain neutral. Um, the lip corner is pulled up and back on one side only. It's important to note, uh, or interesting to note, uh, if you will, that contempt is the only unilateral expression. And what that means is uh, that only one side of the face is actually making the critical action. So you can see the right side of her lip corner is pulled up, but the left side is, is remaining generally neutral, uh, making this a unilateral expression. The uh, next expression, facial expression that we're going to look at, uh, uh, or emotion if you will, is sadness. So you can see this individual is clearly not very happy with something. Uh, they're frowning uh, is what most people would refer uh, to this image as. You can see the inner corners of the eyebrows are raised. Uh, the eyelids are loosened um, or drooping. Uh, the lip corners are pulled down, also drooping. It's more of, um, I guess, a, the, the user, in a sense, is, is emotionally uh, drooping. So physically, their face does the same thing. You uh, would see this in a user research context when an individual has perhaps been unsuccessful in completing a task. Um, they've even uh, perhaps seen something that they didn't expect, um, something perhaps that offended them. Um, they might become sad. This is obviously the last thing you would want to happen. Um, you know, having a user interact with your design, the last thing you want to have is for them to reach a point of sadness because it leads to things like site abandonment. Um, it can damage the image, um, company image, things of that nature. The next emotion is a very interesting one, uh, and this one is fear. So you may be asking yourself, when would somebody become afraid or scared or, or show you know, the fear emotion in user research or, doing a, or during a user research session? And it definitely happens. Um, so I can tell you I've run many sessions where we've tasked a participant with something, perhaps filling out a credit card application, um, or uh, trying to, uh, you know, make a, uh, a transfer between their bank accounts, for example, and uh, they've entered some sensitive information, including some numbers, um, and 
right when they're about to hit the submit button, sometimes you'll see people kind of pull back for a moment and, and show like kind of like a gritting of the teeth, like, um, and is, is, is what I expect going to happen? I, did, I, did I do everything correctly? And, and that's really a fearful emotion. I mean, that's uh, not knowing what's going to happen uh, as a result of what you're about to do can really, can really scare you. And as you can see, this individual um, is a little bit scared. Um, the physical characteristics that make up the fear facial expression or the fear emotion uh, facial expression, the eyebrows are pulled up and together. As you can see, the upper eyelids are also pulled up and the lip corners are drawn out and stretched. I also mentioned a gritting of the teeth. It's kind of, it's kind of like, a, well, what's, what's going to happen next? And obviously if what does happen next is not what the person was hoping uh, uh, to happen, that's when you reach uh, other uh, emotions that we're going to discuss like anger. Uh, or discussed, just like our next one. So the next uh, emotion that we're going to discuss is um, discuss is disgust, and um, you can see there's this individual is kind of making a facial expression, kind of, you know, he's kind of fed up with something. So in a user research context, you'll see somebody uh, uh, show a level of disgust when they've experienced a consistent level of confusion. So like in our first webinar. We talked about body language, uh, the three different forms of body language we talked about. We talked about confidence, confusion, and frustration. Oftentimes when a user is confused um, or frustrated for a decent level uh, or a decent period of time, a prolonged period of time, they reach a level of disgust where, you know, let's say they're trying to order a, a new pair of shoes online and they just can't figure it out. It's not work. The process is not working or it's it's too sluggish and they're not able to complete it. They might make a, a face of, of disgust, like, you know, I've just, I've had enough. And that's when you see people leave your site or exit out of your app or even delete your app um, if it's a mobile device. And that's just not what you want to do. So those are very important and critical things to pick up on a, in, uh, in a user research context when you're conducting qualitative research because that's the types of stuff uh, that, that clients need to know. You never want your users to become disgusted because when they become disgusted, they become frustrated. And when they become frustrated, they become angry. When they become angry, sometimes they, they'll leave your site. Um, to the physical, actual, the actual physical characteristics of this individual, uh, when someone is disgusted, you can see the eyebrows are sort of pulled down, almost pulled together as well. Uh, there's a wrinkling of the, uh, of the nose. Um, the upper lip is slightly pulled up and the lips are loosened and kind of hanging slightly. And the reason why that is, is, is with disgust, it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a completed, a completed emotion. The person's kind of just really fed up and they're making the face like, um, uh, you know, I'm disgusted. Uh, the last uh, motion that we're going to talk about, like I mentioned a few slides ago is anger. Uh, anger is one that can stem from, like I mentioned before, uh, a, a persistent level of confusion or frustration. So if a user is confused with a process, uh, something's not working properly, um, they're trying to read some content on a page and it's not making sense, so they read it again and they're still not getting the verbiage, it's not resonating with them, they reach a level of frustration. And um, consistent with that, and after frustration, they can reach a level of, of anger, and they become angry uh, and ultra frustrated, which is the last thing that you want, uh, because you can see this individual is obviously completely fed up with what it is that he was interacting with. Let's say he was tasked with, with doing something on a site. He's attempted it multiple times, uh, gotten multiple error messages has been unable to recover from those error messages, and frankly, at this point, is really angry enough to give up. Um, the physical characteristics of this, uh, of this emotion of anger is you can see the eyebrows are pulled down, the upper and lower eyelids are uh, pulled together, uh, the margin of the lips are rolled in, uh, and the mouth can either be closed and or the lips may be tightened. It's usually what happens when someone shows um, a, a level of anger. It's almost like they, they're, he, you can almost tell he's gritting his teeth, but the lips are typically closed, so obviously you can't see the, the, uh, the gritting of the teeth in this example. Uh, now that I've talked about the seven different uh, emotions and I've shared some examples of uh, when some of these would occur in user research, uh, I'm going to share a couple examples of what to actually do as the moderator uh, when you are sitting there with the participant and you view these uh, facial expressions. The first one we're going to look at is contempt. So we've got a picture here on the left of an individual that's interacting with something. They're, 
on a website uh, sitting at their desk um, and then you see the, like a slight furrowing of the brow in the picture on the right. Um, this is a contemptuous look consistent with the one that we looked at earlier. Clearly this individual is kind of, he's questioning something. He's, he's not sure about something. He might be reading something and as he was going along something didn't make sense or it wasn't fully clear. It's always important as the moderator at this point to, if the user is articulating um, thoughts at this point, to allow them to finish their thought, um, find a good point in time to interject, uh, and ask a question such as, what are you thinking about here? It's always important to, um, to, to ask open-ended questions such as these, because you can, it helps you get to the root cause of, of what caused this facial expression, what caused this reaction, uh, what was the content that made this person um, show this level of contempt or confusion. It's also important um, and, and really helpful in qualitative research for, uh, for us as researchers to probe on emotional state. So if a user is, is showing a level of confusion, we, we know, we may know, and they may explain to us that they're a bit confused, but we want to gauge, we want to have a good understanding of, of what their emotional state is. Are they, are they upset? Where is, this, where is this level of contempt going to lead? And we'll actually get more in depth um, into uh, into emotionals into emotional states and how to examine uh, and analyze those in in the third part of our webinar. So make sure you tune in for that. The second example of uh, of what to do as a moderator, we're going to look at happiness. So you can see here, there's a picture of an individual on the left, um, and they are examining something very neutral look on their face. Uh, they might be reading some a news ad or. Uh, they might be trying to complete some sort of task, but there's really not much going on at this point. They might be in the early stages of a task. And then you can see on the right, there's, there's a, a, a joyous look. There's a laugh or a smile. This is kind of a more obvious one. Uh, as a moderator, when you see something like this, one thing that's very important to do is, is create rapport with, with the user by not just sitting there blank-faced and neutral. It's okay to, to smile and maybe even laugh a little bit. You don't want to allow somebody to bolsterously laugh out loud and then you just sit there, you know, blank face, they might feel uh, like awkward and, and, and leave their thought. But, but uh, it's also important at the same time to, uh, while you're creating rapport with the, rapport with the uh, participant, don't mirror them entirely. So you never want to like laugh out loud and, and laugh along with the participant because you can buy or, uh, bias subsequent, uh, uh, you know, interactions that you have, subsequent thoughts that they share. And, and ultimately, uh, you end up biasing the, uh, the data that you're gathering. Um, lastly, it's always important, too, at a point like this, um, when, if you see somebody laugh or smile, is to ask them to elaborate a little bit on the usefulness of the content once you've identified what it was uh, that caused the, the, the laughter or the smile. Because it's always important to, uh, to, make, uh, your, to, or to provide a pleasant experience to uh, your for your users and clearly you can see this individual is is experiencing something pleasant but it's also important to know that the content is uh, while it while it may be amusing is it also helpful because uh, your site content ultimately should provide a pleasant but also a very useful and functional uh, experience and, and with that that concludes um, all of the uh, content that I wanted to share and uh, now we'll move on to a Q&A section where we can uh, answer some questions that uh, we have not yet been able to answer uh, during the webinar. But one of the questions that came in early on, um, and it was a clarification when you were talking about the different expressions, um, what did you mean by contempt is the only unilateral expression? So um, what I meant by that is, and I can go back to, I can go back to the slide actually and show you. So, as you can see here, uh, by being a unilateral expression, only one side of her face is, is really making the, is the critical action. So you can see here that the lip corner on the right side of her face is raised, but on the left side, it, it remains in pretty much a neutral state. Um, as opposed to sadness, for example, uh, conversely, you see both lip corners are pulled down simultaneously. So, which may obviously making this a, a, a bilateral uh, facial expression. Great, so another question that came in um, is, is there a difference when it comes to interpreting a specific form of body language, just such as hand gestures versus facial expressions? 
That's a great question. Okay, so and um, obviously we talked about body language in our first um, in our first webinar. Now we're talking about facial expressions. Um, it's important to note that uh, that the difference would be the fact that uh, the facial expression is the actual involuntary, I guess, action that's the uh, subconscious uh, reaction to an event or an occurrence, and the body language um, aspect of it is more of of how the user is dealing with that specific emotion. That's how I would describe the difference. Um, another question, does the interpretation of facial expressions change if perhaps the individual is of a different culture or ethnicity? Um, yeah, I mean, it can definitely, it can definitely change. Like I mentioned earlier, all of our um, faces are unique. Um, for the most part, the, the, the facial expressions will remain um, pretty consistent. I mean, you might notice subtle differences if an individual has, you know, like I mentioned earlier before, smaller um, eyelid, you know, eyelids that are closer together, a uh, smaller overall face, a larger, uh, larger forehead. I mean, you might, you might notice subtle differences, but for the most part, um, there's not necessarily uh, any fundamental differences that, that, you, would, that you would need to uh, notate as a, a researcher in, when conducting this type of qualitative research. Great, and I think we have time for one more question. Um, when observing both body language and facial expressions, is one more important than the other? Um, well, I, I, would say, I would say maybe s sort of. Uh, while both are obviously important, and it's kind of a, a carryover from the, the last question. Um, if I had to say one was more important, I would say it would, it would be the facial expression. As, as I said when, we, when I first started this webinar, somebody can always fake a smile. I can, I can put a smile on my face right now um, voluntarily, but for the most part, uh, facial expressions are, are our involuntary and like I said, subconscious reactions to an event. So they're, I would say they're a little bit more telling, a little bit more accurate, um, you know, in terms of, of, the, of the, uh, the person, uh, in this case, the participant's emotional state at that moment. The body language is more, it's more of the, it comes second. It's, it's how they're choosing to deal uh, with, the, with that uh, emotional state. But um, I guess if, if one was more important than the other, it would be facial expressions. Great. Thank you. Um, that's it for our Q&A portion right now. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to submit them and we will be doing a follow up with all the questions as well as a recording of this webinar. So thank you everyone for attending today. We hope you were able to gain a more in depth look at how to effectively distinguish facial expressions when conducting user research. Thank you, Matt. Um, you can also get in touch with Key Lime Interactive by emailing us at marketing at keylimeinteractive.com. Again, thank you for your time, and this concludes our webinar for today. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.